Friends, welcome to this video lecture on the topic types and barriers of communication. I hope you are enjoying this course on selection and integration of technology in the educational processes where we are discussing about the various technologies and ICTs which you can integrate in the different modes of education such as face to face education, open distance learning, online learning and blended learning. Now in the previous two lectures we have discussed about the concept of communication, the components of communication and the process of communication. And I had also given some ideas about the technologies or ICTs which we can use in different modes of education. Now in this video we will be discussing about the different types of communication and the factors which affect which hamper the communication which happens in the classroom. So to start with I would like to recollect the concept of communication which we have discussed and we have discussed that and you may be remembering we have discussed communication as we have defined communication as the exchange of or sharing of information between two individuals or a group of individuals. One of the simplest basic definition which we can give for communication. Now I would request you to think of the communication, the different types of communication which happens in a classroom situation. Say for example, as a teacher I am teaching to a group of 50 students. So I will be teaching them some concept, I will be asking them to engage in some discussions, I will be giving them some assignments. So many such things happen in the classroom. And before teaching, before I undertake the teaching session, I may be preparing the lesson plan also. So while preparing the lesson plan, I may be thinking of something in mind, the way the content, the way the concept is to be taught to the students, the activities to be given to the students and how I should manage the classroom teaching learning activities. So I may be thinking of many activities in my mind. This is one thing. The second thing is, now when I am engaging in the teaching learning process and when I am making any verbal communication, see I will be sometimes nodding my head, I will be sometimes maybe laughing, I may be making use of my hand the way I do now, right now. So when, when I speak in the classroom, when I give a verbal lecture, when I give a lecture in the classroom, I make use of my body parts too. So friends, in general, this is how when somebody communicate, when somebody talks to another individual, they speak at the same time, they also make use of their body parts. So accordingly, the way the message is conveyed, according to the type, the way message is conveyed, we can have two types of communication. One is the verbal communication and the second category, the second type is non-verbal communication. So in broad, we have two types of communication, one the verbal communication and the other is non-verbal communication and most of the teachers when we communicate we make use of both these types of communication. Now we will see in detail what is verbal communication, the different types of verbal communication both in verbal and non-verbal category. When we talk about the verbal communication, it is saying that verbal communication is the expression of ideas with the help of speech sounds or written symbols combined into words and words into sentences that could effectively convey meaning. Maybe this is one of the definition we can give for verbal communication. What does it say? See this is nothing but 
you are conveying the message you are sharing the message information with the help of speech sounds where you will see the written symbols will be combined into words and words will be combined into sentences and that's what is happening in this video lecture also i am talking my words are combined into sentences and it makes some meaning when i complete the sentence and when i am talking about the verbal communication i am making my audience understand about what is verbal communication for that i give lot of ex examples i explain what is verbal communication and mostly this is happening through my speech i talk i deliver a kind of a video lecture so you can see even in this video lecture also i am talking and to support my talk some graphics or some images are also added some text material is also added but majorly my lecture is the lecture method i am speaking to you i am conveying this information message through my speech so this kind of conveying information through verbal symbols through verbal speeches we call it as verbal communication and i would say in most of the classrooms either in the school or higher education verbal communication is mostly carried out but i would again remind you see since we are talking about a course on technology integration along with the verbal speech now many technologies are also used to support this speech maybe i would say when you see this lecture when i am speaking you would also see some graphics some images some videos so all those are supporting my verbal speech and this is one of the techniques which we use for making our communication effective so i hope you have understood the very simple definition of verbal communication now coming to the types of verbal communication no i would request again you to think of can you think of how many types of verbal communication are there see there are two types one is oral communication and the other is written communication what is oral communication as i said oral communication involves conveying the message verbally so very simple when a teacher teaches her students through verbal lecturing through speeches through by speaking then all these are verbal communication because most of the time the teacher is talking in the classroom to convey the subject knowledge the content knowledge now what about the second category which is written communication written communication involves conveying message through written symbols such as notices reports memos circular email memoranda manual handbook there can have many textbook even see a subject knowledge a content knowledge is conveyed by writing the textbook the subject knowledge the students understands the subject knowledge by reading the textbook some references reference books so there can have many written materials so in written materials the written text helps the student to get the meaning of the message or the message or simply we call it as information or the subject knowledge so when an information is transmitted or shared in the form of text we call it as written communication in the form of written symbols we call it as written communication and we are very much aware that if we want to convey some information to the students we write it in a paper and this will be displayed on the notice board if you want to give some memos to the students then again it is written on the paper and it is given to the student so all those are in written format text format so such communication where written symbols are used then such type of verbal communication we group under the written communication so friends two types of verbal communication one is the oral communication and the other is written communication and both these communication styles are extensively used in the teaching learning process and we will see how this has changed with the emergence of technologies the oral communication and written communication i have already given you a hint that while communicating in the classroom a teacher makes of 
use of a teacher makes use of various technologies icts and for written communication also many things are not now written in papers it is sent through emails some whatsapp message services are used messages are sent in some facebook groups and this is how now the written communication has changed now let us talk about the second type of communication which is the non verbal communication and the definition says it involves conveying message without using words either spoken or written or else the communication between two or more persons through the use of facial expressions postures gestures etc is called non verbal communication very easy very simple that way see verbal communication is nothing but it is the speeches the talks so when as i said in the beginning when i talk i will be making use of my hands i will be you know making use of my eyes sometimes i may bring small laugh in my mouth so there can happen many you know movement of the body parts it is always accompanied the verbal speech is always accompanied by such simple small body movements and it should not be look very awkward it should be in the at the at the minimal level and it should come automatically you should not make deliberate attempt to uh, you know make body movements so always the verbal communication is accompanied by the body movements and such when body parts or when we convey the information without using words either spoken or written and in a big way if it is if the body movements are used for conveying information this is non verbal communication i would uh, you know give you a simple small example from the classroom situation see when the teacher teaches in a classroom and if some students are talking the teacher would ask the students to keep quiet you know a putting a, a finger on the mouth itself conveys that the students need to sit quiet so putting the the finger on the mouth even itself conveys some meaning to the students so such kind of communication where we are not using any speech sounds or talk or verbal speeches then such communication are non verbal communication and let us see the different kinds of non verbal communication the most used non verbal communication or the types of non verbal communication see the major types of non verbal communication are one the personal appearance then the posture the gestures the facial expression the eye contact as i said see if you are going to a classroom for teaching learning uh, process or if you are engaged in the teaching learning process of course you need to dress up very neatly it it should not be like you are going to some market where you are wearing very casual dress because you are going to teach so you should be you know properly dressed it should be neatly managed and you should maintain a good posture so when you are engaging in the teaching learning process you should not sit i mean like sometimes we see people i mean like teachers sitting on the benches or desks also so be in the middle uh, part of your uh, classroom then give your lecture if you if you are engaging your students in teaching learning activities go to the students clear their queries so and whenever you stand in front of your students you should maintain a good posture then the gesture also the body movements that you use as i said you forcefully do not bring some body movements it should come automatically when you explain something then the facial expression also very important as i said if you want to make your stud students sit quiet in the classroom even a daring i mean like a, your high contact or your facial expression would work for that you don't have to talk anything so these are some of the types of non verbal communication usually the teachers use in the classroom friends i would also like to say both the type of communication the verbal communication and non verbal communication is also important in the case of i mean like when you are making any digital teaching learning resources as i said again i would remind you i would be quoting ex examples uh, from the technology point of view because this is something which would help you to understand the use of technology in the teaching learning process so see when you are giving preparing a 
video program the way you see it the way you talk the way you convey information to the students everything matters it's it's not a easy job that way you have to be properly dressed you have to have the adequate content this should be presently very beautifully you should make your students interactive so there are many such factors so all those types of factors maybe we can get a clue from the different kinds of communication so when you are making such lectures when you are making any audio program when you prepare some graphical images all these needs to be kept in mind the different types of communication and this plays a very important role when we prepare any digital teaching learning resources especially like the one i was quoting the video programs and all friends now i would be shifting my discussion to a different uh, type of communication we have talked about the verbal and non verbal communication that is one type of categorization there is another type of categorization where you will see four different types of communication one is the intrapersonal communication the second one is the interpersonal communication group communication is the third and mass communication is the fourth now let us briefly understand what are these types of communication the intrapersonal communication very simple and very i mean like the teachers always make use of this communication intra means you know is a kind of thinking within oneself as i said and i have pointed out see when i am giving a lecture in the classroom and if i see some students talking or not listening to the lecture my lecture then i may be thinking of why these students are not listening to my lecture so some kind of a thinking goes inside some kind of a thinking where i am communicating with myself so such communications which happens inside or within we call it as intrapersonal communication the second one is interpersonal communication inter means between two and this is one of the communication types which we commonly see in the classroom when a teacher communicate with the students the teacher is communicating with the students when the student communicate with another student there are two pupils two individuals two students are involved in communication so when two individuals are involved in communication we call it as interpersonal communication the group communication is also there in the classroom teaching learning situation and this is also very common that way a teacher is addressing a 50 number of students 60 number of students say for example then here one teacher is addressing a group of students of group of group of individuals such communication where in which one individual is communicating communicating with a group such communication we call it as group communication and this is what we see in the normally in a teaching learning situation we have also seen this type of communication suppose i am sending a video program to my students or suppose i am giving a uh, facebook live lecture then many students you know at a single point of time will attend my lecture maybe some thousand students 2000 students so this is also kind of a group communication now the fourth category is mass communication where in which mass medias technologies are used for communication and there are many such technologies maybe we can say traditional and new technologies also the traditional technologies like radio television okay when radio one program is telecasted telecasted through the um, radio then this is attended by many individuals many people and we have in igno also we have the teleconferencing and radio classes live radio classes and live television teleconferencing session it is attended by you know a large number of students so such communication when mass medias technologies are used in the communication we call it as mass communication so i would just sum up see two types of communication one is the verbal and non verbal communication this is used in the classroom teaching learning situation and this has changed with the emergence of technologies then the second category the types of communication 
where we have talked about the intrapersonal, interpersonal, group communication and mass communication. So, this is a second type of communication. Now friends, we will be talking about the second uh, concept in this video lecture which is about the barriers. Before talking about the barriers, I would say and as I have pointed out and discussed in the previous lectures, communication is classified into either effective or ineffective communication. And that is why we see most some of the lectures are not very effective, students does not understand anything. As a teacher, if I have a concept to be taught to my students and if I can meaningfully convey that concept to my students, the way I was thinking of then such communication we call it as effective communication. And if I am fail, if I fail to communicate the concept which I was thinking of, then such communications are ineffective. So, communication falls either into effective category or ineffective category. And why? Why some communications are effective? Why some, some communications are ineffective? There are some factors which hamper our communication that is also there. There are some factors as we have discussed in the previous lecture, there are some factors which hamper the communication or distort the communication. Say for example, the noise from the market when I am giving a lecture, some outside disturbances if it is heavily raining. So, there can have many geographical issues also. So, there are many such factors which hamper or distort the communication. And we call those factors as noise or barrier. And this is how the beginning of barriers comes into the communication. So, the factors which affect the communication we call it as barriers. And now we will see some of the barriers which are usually played in the communication and this makes the communication ineffective. There can have many strategies which you can use. Uh, the communication effective that we will be discussing in some other lectures. But the factors which makes the communication ineffective, one of them is the, is the impact of noises or barrier. So, we will be discussing in brief the different kinds of barriers that appear in the communication. I would say the different barriers like one is the physical barriers which is nothing but see I am giving a lecture in a classroom where 100 or 200 students are sitting okay, and the classroom is very lengthy and if I am talking standing in front of the classroom, this may not be I mean like heard by the students who are sitting at the back of the classroom. Why? Because the distance is too much. So, there can have many physical barriers like if the, the you know as I said, if the classroom is very big, it is going to be difficult. And if I am giving a lecture from here and the students are sitting at some far off places, it also creates some kind of a distance. So, physical barriers is one of the barriers. Psychological barriers. See, I am going to give a lecture to my students, but I am not, you know, physically fit today. I have some health issues. Then in such cases, uh, my, my lecture will not be effective it is going to be definitely ineffective. This also depends upon my way of, you know, uh, the way I behave, my beliefs, my attitudes, my interests. So, there are many psychological factors. So, the second barrier I would say psychological barriers. I had already given the, uh, you know, some kind of examples like it depends up upon the, my communication is going to be effective or ineffective which is depending upon my uh, beliefs, my attitude, my interest of taking sessions. So, there are many such psychological barriers. Then the socio-cultural barriers are also there. In a classroom sometimes the boys may not be you know willing to talk with the girls, there can have gender issues, all those such socio-cultural issues also are creating barriers in the communication. Then the linguistic barriers are also there. You should be able to as a teacher, if, if it is a teacher, the teacher should be able to effectively convey the idea for that the language abilities of the teacher also matters a lot. The vocabulary, the accent the teacher uses, the way things are 
conveyed to the students using of use of simple examples all those matters and all those are related to the language ability of the teacher then one of the very important you know barriers is the technical barriers because today we are extensively using technology in the teaching learning process and it's very common that when we give a lecture through online some kind of platforms like the google meet or zoom there can have connectivity issues uh, the the devices issues are there then battery issues electricity failure there are many technical barriers then the last barrier i would say barrier due to information load see normally in a classroom teaching learning situation it is running for some 40 45 minutes duration and if you are bringing huge amount of information which you need to complete in a in a time duration of 40 45 minutes it is going to be very tough for the students they cannot understand they will not be able to understand what the teacher is talking or what the teacher is discussing and this is the same with a video program also if you are developing a video program on any concept and if you are bringing in too many concepts in a video program it is going to be very difficult and at the same time it is also going to be boring for the student so there is a time period which the students can you know pay attention to understand what is discussed in that video program and that's why we are seeing the video programs which are of short duration sometimes they uh, see the video programs which are of lengthy duration sometimes it is going to be you know difficult and the students may not be paying much attention they will simply drag and complete the video program so friends i would just sum up the barriers we have discussed the physical barriers psychological barriers socio cultural barriers linguistic barriers technical barriers and barriers due to information load now i would give some suggestions how you can eliminate this barriers because this is very much important in the teaching learning process even this is also very much important when we make use of digital teaching learning resources or icts or technologies now see even if you are making any video program audio program if you are developing a podcast if you are developing a graphic or any cartoon animations any kind of teaching learning resource or open education resources or if you are using flipped learning gamification any such technologies see few things you can keep in mind is use simple and clear words you can just correlate with these you know suggestions with the text material that you are developing and the other digital teaching learning resources use simple and clear words then avoid unambiguous words sentences and jargons then emphasize important concepts this is very important if you are talking a very important concept you have to maybe you can repeat two or three times you should emphasize that concept then avoid information overload and unwanted information you have to be very careful about that don't keep on saying in the video program or audio program just give what is required for the students use suitable body language as i was saying don't you know put effort to bring unwanted body movements it should automatically come from your mind when you are giving a speech use suitable medium this is with respect if you are giving a verbal lecture it should accompany the required technologies you know it's not all the time required it is not always required you know it is not always i mean like you don't have to use the powerpoint presentation in your lecture you can use other technologies open educational resources you can use you can ask students to visit some website graphics you can show so use a suitable medium by that i mean use a suitable technology or ict then the last one is respect and understand the learners emotions this is also very important when you you know give a lecture when you take a classroom lecture or when you are engaged in the teaching learning process you should respect your students give some time for your students and see how the students are behaving whether they are happy with your lecture or whether they are not paying attention to your lecture this should be always there this is how you would make your communication effective so friends there are many barriers 
you may use make use of some of these strategies for eliminating the barriers and which ultimately would help you to make your communication very effective i am just summing up this lecture in this lecture we have talked about the different types of communication verbal non verbal communication and the other classification intrapersonal interpersonal mass communication and group communication and we have then discussed about the different barriers in the communication and some of the strategies which you can use for eliminating the barriers that are appearing in your communication i hope you have understood this lecture thank you